It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So today we're going to talk about Dragon Ball and your time with the series. First of all, I just want to say that your contribution to the series cannot be understated. When you took the reins as the lead in Dragon Ball and GT as Kid Goku, of course, since you've worked on the show, thank you so much. You've had you're very welcome. And of course, since you've worked on the show, you've had the chance to meet many fans who grew up with it. I just want to know, did you ever expect when you signed up for this job that it would grow to encompass so much of your time, even today with going to conventions, talking and with meeting fans? Because I know this past weekend you were actually busy doing that as well. Oh, yes. Um, no, I had no idea um, at the time of, at the audition and even well after being cast and recording for you know, months and years at a time. I, I'm very <laughs> blessed and and um, very grateful that I am able to utilize um, my platform as those characters to do what I'm doing today, which is including, you know, the meet and greets and the comic cons and the, you know, the traveling, as well as to um, inspire youth who look are looking to get into the creative arts, whether music, um, voice acting, um, musicians um any kind of show business so it's it's really been it's been fulfilling um and i'm just really grateful that i have a part i had a big part in that especially in the og days you know back when the company yeah. was tiny and we were able to um you know grow slowly over the years so yeah i'm really happy about that it's 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 it's, it's a livelihood thing at this point so that's good I know you were like there for near the beginning, like pretty close to the beginning. I know you weren't there for the ocean dub or anything, but when Funimation started, you were there. And from what I understand, when you do do regular voice animation, um, you do the performance and then the animation is laid out to match your performance. But of course, like you were saying in the old days uh, and still today, when you're dubbing anime, you got to match the voice, the like the lip flaps. So what was the process right, like a... for you when you first mm -hmm. got the role? Like, was it weird for you whenever you were dubbing over it in the beginning? Like, because I know in another interview, it, you were saying you weren't really familiar with it back then. Right. The, most of the voice acting I'd done it was in, w with companies that would hire me to be the voices of toys, you know, that would therefore be transported yeah. and made into voices that would be inside of toys. And they weren't they weren't character, you know, they weren't uh, it wasn't cartoons. It was more different kinds of voices uh singing um holiday tunes a lot of children's type stuff so it was a completely different process it would be just you know an hour or two of just constant switching from different voices to different songs with or without accompaniment so it was a whole different thing and then right. when i did hell in the hen for one season with chuck e cheese it was also different everything was just done uh with direction and no no visual storyboards or anything this one here with uh dragon ball and dragon ball z um audition for the female characters was brought, brought in through my musical contacts uh was kind of noticed at some session work at a uh working on an album with brave combo in denton it was a uh, an experience where one of the the fans that was there and friends of the band uh, heard my voice and, and noticed the uh, animated quality and he had already had in his mind that he was going to be casting the show in, in the dallas fort worth region because there's just so much talent here and it was a right to work state we wouldn't have to worry about residuals or royalties so i found all of this stuff out later um but showing up and and voicing the voice you know the voice of gohan the process you know i'm, I'm a quick learner um so once i went through the process once i was able to kind of like you know get get yeah. better at it and more efficient but early on, you know, Gohan was mostly in the Ginyu saga was mostly background character, a lot of reactions, taking off, landing, some fighting, um, not a whole lot of dialogue. He was a much more prominent char character later in the series. But as that uh, progressed, basically, I would just mimic myself in the headphones. They would play my last recording, you know, whenever the last time I had come in, whether it's a month, two, three months, whatever. And then we would just record uh, and fast forward to the next line and we would use paper scripts and we would look at the old style TV and watch the animation while we're recording. I would usually just memorize the line and then watch the, the screen um, every time. That way the, the delivery would be much better and it'd be much more natural. And that way I'm not looking down at a, at a paper right. and, and missing some of the beats. But the my musical background uh, played a huge part in this because there's a, a cadence and a rhythm involved and that was really helpful for me to have such a you know, uh, 20 plus years of um, music experience growing up in, in, in and out of show business and theater and things like that. A lot of acting training. Right. 
And uh, like you said, you started out with Gohan on Dragon Ball, and you eventually moved on to Kid Goku in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball GT. But I feel like more people, mm -hmm. like Teen Gohan is a very iconic character, Young Gohan. He's a fan favorite. And I think the version you played is probably the most liked by fans. What do you think it is about that younger version of Gohan that fans gravitate toward? I think there was just such a uh, such a, a long pathway of um, the, the the character itself. There was a lot of development for Go, Gohan from the get go as a child into his preteens, and I think that um, a lot of kids of kind of all ages could kind of relate to uh, the the situations uh, Gohan was going through with you know, the loss of his father and the, you know, the, the angst and, and, um, his loyalty to his, his, his loved ones, basically his friends and, and, um, to see them go through pain or suffering or, you know, excruciating defeat really shaped his, his character and how he responded throughout his, those formative years. And I think that, a lot of the fans back in the day when they were watching it as a child in those in that same age range, they really could relate to to Gohan and and uh, the pain he was suffering with watching his loved ones get hurt yeah. and or defeated or destroyed. And so when he finally unleashed in the Cell Saga, I think that that's why he's such a fan favorite and and hopefully accompanied with, you know, the voice I provided for him, hopefully was something that they gravitated to as well um, in the sense that I hope that it was you know a believable voice for his for his character and and that the acting really reflected the emotional pain involved and also you know being a <laughs> a vocalist my whole life mostly and and already being you know traveling with a show band throughout the entire time I was uh, voicing Gohan and Goku and East Kai and whatever else I was traveling with a show band and and constantly using my voice and the screaming um, was not near as difficult as I think I even thought it was going to be because I'd had so much experience using my voice, contorting my voice and being able to endure the stamina involved with screaming and yelling for, right. you know, long periods of time, which thankfully we were able to maneuver a way to do a lot of that blowout screaming at the end of the session, even back then when we were releasing the uh, videos on uh, VHS tape, you know, back in those days, um, they, they at least were able to do that. And then they were able to fix a lot of stuff in post once all of the recordings were done and then they were layered and put together with the other voices, but we recorded separately. So I, I, I didn't see other castmates unless it was coming and going in between sessions or if some of them were directors and then maybe at a cast party here and there, which was kind of what we did back in the day. Right. And it's good you didn't have any issues with screaming because I know that story of Sean Schimmel doing the scream going Super Saiyan 3 and he passed out in the booth. So that's good that you're past. I've heard about that. There. Yeah. I Thankfully, there was no health concerns involved other than just, you know, a lot of vocal strain, a lot of vocal fatigue. But being a, a singer that was trained my entire life with voice and working with choirs and 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 then again working with show bands i i had a really strong sense of how to navigate those those um struggles and obstacles because i had been you know singing and traveling you know professionally since i was 18 years old so yeah you know 10 years into it was when i got cast as go on so i was able to do it and i also was able to recover because there's a resilience in having the chops at the time, which I think that was really good that I was actively utilizing my voice for uh, all kinds of stuff, mostly vocals and um, some improv and live acting and things like that. So I, I knew what my limits were and I had a very strong sense of how to uh, get around that vocal fatigue and strain. And then when I was vocally strained, I knew what to do to recover. And that, you know, would be vocal rest, um, lots of water, hydration, and sleep was the absolute best um and then there were times when i did have to see an ent for vocal fatigue uh, but that was because i was singing while i was sick and while i was strained and there was a lot of that um off and off depending on my schedule and depending on the touring schedule there were times when we were working seven days a week you know over 250 days a year so but um thankfully i knew how to how to handle it and i you know had a really good sense of my voice and my the physical part of it and knew how to knew how to do it and thankfully i was able to create those 
blood curdling screams without, iconic screams you know, yes yeah, well, without, I mean, it sounds out. like you had a full plate. I mean, even then, after you did Dragon Ball Z, you went on to do the lead as Kid Goku in Dragon Ball and GT after that. So taking that right. lead role from Gohan, who was, I mean, he was a background character. He got more time in the Cell Saga. But then, like, you did Dragon Ball and mm -hmm. GT. You're in every episode, pretty much. Was there any pressure mm -hmm. that you felt going into it? Or did you have a similar mindset with Gohan, where you were just there and, doing um, your, you know? Yeah, I mean, I just it, a lot of it was just getting into a rhythm and understanding the etiquette and, and and how to how to really focus on the direction and listening to what the director was saying. And um, I'd already been doing that for a while. So when Goku was handed over, uh, um, I just showed up for my session and that's what we we worked on. You know, there was no prep. There was no it, it wasn't really necessary um, for that. But, um, you know, all of a sudden. I'm voicing Goku and Dragon Ball. Um, right. I think the director knew my parameters and had heard um, that being that they're son and you know son and um, father that they would sound similar and that there wouldn't be a, an issue there. And it was just a matter of um, you know the self discipline to really pay attention to the direction. So I think early on I was like, "Am I doing okay? What is going on? Like, what do they want from me? Okay, what's different about this voice?" And I believe that my acting training really came in handy even more so with Goku being that he's more prominent character and really trying to not only change the sound of the voice, but the way that I delivered the lines and, and, you know, have that, that acting training under my belt. Uh, I actually went through two years of majoring in dramatic arts at university of North Texas, even though I was focusing on my music career and my singing, I wanted to learn a lot more about theater. So there was a lot of theater experience I was able to gain by, by heading that way right out of high school so um i really wanted the delivery of the lines to reflect a completely different character and um hopefully you know the directors were happy with it and the fans seemed to be happy with it um so i think it was just once i got through that hump of, of starting with a new character just making sure that they were happy with the uh yeah the performance and it was a really good performance. Like like you said, Goku's voice is so much lighter, and you like took Gohan's voice very seriously. And Goku has that very innocent light voice. And you know, that's what they mm -hmm. say about voice like actors in general, whenever they take on a role, every role is like their child because you have to give each character new life. And I hate to ask you to pick between your children, but which character do you think you personally enjoyed voicing more? Well, now they're both for different reasons. The, the Gohan was my first anime role, my actual official anime role. And now, and I was very attached to that character and the self and the development of that character because in my own personal life, I was experiencing a very, very difficult situation. Um, right when I was cast, my mother was diagnosed with an aggressive form of leukemia. She was only 50 years old. And so throughout that entire first seven months of my, my career as voicing Gohan, she was in and out of chemo and she, and she ended up not making it and passing away of complications in August of 99. So I actually had a lot of real life experience to draw from when it came time to fight Cell and to deal with the fact that his father had passed, had passed on and the, the grueling experience of the loss accompanied with all of these horrible things that were happening around Gohan that were, that were traumatizing him. And um, the fact that he held back a lot of emotion and then finally was able to release that was very personal for me. And I look back at it now, you know, I was just trying to survive, you know, get through life yeah. like we all are. We all have struggles and, and things and unforeseen things happen to any and all of us at any given time. So there's a very deep personal connection with Gohan because of the timing of when I was cast and what I was going through in my personal life. And uh, when Goku came along, it was uh, a much more lighthearted, uh, highly comedic role, which I personally enjoy because I love comedy and I love to laugh and make people laugh and being a stage performer in musicals, which a lot of times contained a lot of comedy. Um, that was a, a one that I felt a little bit more attached to uh, for that reason. And it was very enjoyable to portray a young boy being a young, you know, being a girl. It was like, I got to live vicariously through the, through a child, through a little boy's, you know, experience. Yeah. And I, I can't do that in real life. So, but it's just, it's, I just find it comedic in my real life for, that I was 
I was um, cast as little boys and, and um, I see why they did it. And I know that a lot of times that's done and, and not just anime, but, but animation and in general, a lot of times the young boys are cast by females because we can carry that voice throughout however long it needs to be done. Um, into our adult years, we can still con continue to, 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 you know, do that voice and deliver that voice for long periods of time. So I, I see why they did that, but I, I just find it funny that most of my roles have been young boys or, you know, even with OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes, which is a non-anime project that I was working on around 2013 through 2017, uh, which uh, it was a Cartoon Network show um, that we recorded in person with all the other cast. And it was actually animated after the fact. So it was a completely different flip-flop of a deal there. But I just think it's, I, I, you know, character voices, I think, just naturally... Um, are easier for me as opposed to really strong dramatic roles and I think I like I think that's because I have such a, a vast amount of experience working with the whole triple thread of music acting and singing through musical theater so it's just a natural you know everybody has like a natural flow of what they're naturally just better at and then as a as a result they're just they're probably going to get cast more in those types of roles and for me, it's just been that lighthearted slapstick, silly stuff that was all about Dragon Ball. You know, it yeah. was, uh, I found it very enjoyable. Um, and then, of course, with him being a more prominent character, you know, I was there more often. I was involved in more scenes. I was able to, you know, you know, be that character throughout his entire childhood. And, and you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very endeared by both characters but for two completely different reasons so that's why I, that's why i explained that right and and the transition from kid goku and then at the end of dragon ball whenever it's sean shimla doing the older goku you did such a good job of portraying that younger goku who's innocent and then he's still the innocent guy even though even when he's older but going back to go right. um final question his Super Saiyan 2 transformation was probably the most iconic transformation in the series, and it's a pretty iconic moment. So I was wanting to know, other than that moment, what do you think is a pretty iconic Gohan moment that you think deserves more recognition or just another moment in general that you look at fondly? I think it's just... I mean, I'd, I'd have to say just that, that entire Cell Saga with his resistance to be violent with his um with him holding back and not believing in himself and having that self-esteem issue with not believing he can do it you know he's just a kid he's still 11 years old um so i mean i just think that it's just hard to to find anything else less iconic than that than those scenes that were leading up to the demise of cell because if if you if everyone was watching it all along from when he was a, a young child, um, they would see that why he had these obstacles, why he held back, why he was kind of in the background and kind of didn't know it wasn't so sure of himself and kind of didn't know what to do. So I think that that whole not only was he physically able, but really being mentally and emotionally able to defeat Cell, you know, obviously with the support of those in this you know but in the background of those scenes so it's hard for me to really pinpoint anything that really stands out more than right. that um other than when he was literally like tossed in the woods by piccolo to like fend for himself and yeah. the fact that he survived that i mean he was a young kid and he's like trying to find food and and find his way around and learn how to you know train his body and his mind to you know, level up and get, and get stronger and, and, and to just simply survive in the woods, you know, without food and shelter, you know? So, I mean, I, that's the only other thing I can think of. Um, Cause I, you know, that's pretty, pretty amazing for him to have found a way to accomplish that and, and realize there's an inner power and an inner human spirit or whatever say in spirit that, that was there all along. It was just a matter of him learning how to tap into it, utilize it when it was time. Yeah, I think he, other than Vegeta, and tr I think he really had like a really interesting character arc of becoming a non-fighter to fighting when it's necessary, you could say. Right, right. And then that's why when he finally was able to, 
he was kind of having to be coached, you know, telepathically. Um, you can do this, like you can do this, like, and, and, and then when of course the Android's telling him, you know, it's not a sin to fight for what's right. If, if violence is necessary for the right reasons, it's not, it's not something to be ashamed of. And so I think that's what, you know, obviously that iconic scene when the red streak comes through and a lot of the fans have, remind, you know, constantly remind me about that. And, you know, I sign a lot of pop toys with, with, um, you know, the Super Saiyan Gohan, uh, a lot of really iconic lines from that, from those scenes. Yeah. Um, so that it's, I mean, I'm constantly reminded it's like, and then I've, you know, I've got my favorite lines that I can remember. And then of course I can always go back and kind of watch it or, um, you know, to, to kind of remind myself of the scene and how, how it all played out. Right. Well, thank you yeah. for your time tonight. This was a lot of fun talking to you. I really appreciate it. Do you have like, what are you doing now? Is there anything, I don't know if you can talk about like your upcoming projects or if they got to be on the download, but is there anything fans can look forward to seeing you in? Um. Yeah. I mean, most of, most of what's going on right now is a lot of the meet and greets and the travel most weekends. I'm also, um working on a project that hasn't come to fruition quite yet but it's it's in the beginning stages um i'll be posting about that when i can um and then i'm also going to be back in the studio recording uh writing some songs for a children's book and that's that's kind of right up my alley because early early in my uh anime career i worked with carl finch at brave combo and we did a lot of the uh uh, taking the Japanese translation for anime themes, putting them into English lyrics to convey the same message, and then also casting and producing and directing singers, including myself, for some of the animation themes for Kitty Grade, Case Closed, Yu Yu Hakusho. So, uh, and then I've also written a lot of parodies, kind of like the Weird Al Yankovic thing, where you take a song and change it for morning show radio. A lot of comedy involved with that. So I have a lot of experience doing things like that. And then um, I have like some songs, uh, kids songs, where I sang like goku and go on as ch as children kids christmas and halloween rocks which can both be found on youtube and a lot of those uh, our links are on my website which is okay. just simply my name my name.com stephanie nadalny.com i'm also really active online with the social media with instagram tiktok i i, I uh, do a lot of collaborations with other voice actors um on site at the actual comic-con uh or comic shops in person and uh, those get posted regularly once every week or, or two. And um, I also have a Stephanie Nadalny voice actress page on Facebook. Uh, I write back to all my fans and I do that throughout the week as, as well as submit auditions. Um, aside from some small roles that I played in some uh, voice, uh, like some video games that, that I, I don't even know the title of, um, there's been nothing really prominent other than the KO, OK KO, but that's been many years ago. But then COVID kind of shut down a lot of my... Um, live performance unfortunately my band had to go on hiatus but we have some holiday gigs coming up which i'm excited about and i'm kind of dabbling in a little bit of everything but mostly i'm reserving my weekends for travel and next year i'll be um i've been invited to canada new zealand australia might be going to the uk i hope um and all over the united states and, and my my big deal now is is getting out of texas as much as possible um just right. to get out and see other parts of the yeah meet, meet fans i've never met or uh go to some events that i have yet to appear at and um so yeah i, I i'll keep people um up to date when announcements can be made and i try to keep my my website updated as far as where i'm going to be and i write back to all my fans so uh i, I just that's that's kind of keeps me busy and uh, i'm happy with that right all right well Thank you again for your time. I'll definitely post all those links in the description and pe keep people updated with your future projects. Definitely.